it's Monday and this is the final week of the daily draw and we've got some really special things all week planned for you. We hope that you're going to love them as much as we do. So we're going to start the day today with Roald Dahl. Way back when, right at the uh, beginning of the daily draw, a couple of months ago, we did um, George's Marvellous Medicine and Matilda and they were really popular. So we've put together these designs for you and um, we've got The Witches and Fantastic Mr Fox. Hope you love them. Hope that you maybe have a go at both of them. But let's get drawing. <music> So we're going to do this fabulous, fantastic Mr. Fox now from um, the Roald Dahl books and using these amazing illustrations of Quentin Blake, who's just absolutely one of my heroes. Um, I love this. So I really hope you all have a go, enjoy having a go at this. So what I want you to think about when you see it is where can you see those shapes in that? Now, immediately when I saw it, I saw a big curve here and a line there like a semicircle, and then I started breaking the shapes down. I'm gonna do it here in my watercolor pencil book, which you'll know I've used, been using all the way through the daily draw. So we've got all these all these other drawers in there, the Monsters Inc, the Cats, the Lady and the Tramp from the other day. So we're gonna do it in this book here. I'm just in the middle of doing the witches at exactly the same time, you can see that there. So here with, Mr. with Fantastic Mr. Fox, what I'm gonna do is start pretty much exactly halfway up my page. And I'm gonna start with a straight line, holding my pencil in a very relaxed way. I'm gonna take a little dot up there and then I'm gonna curve it round. So I have that semicircle that I just talked about there. I might actually take it slightly Further. It's only when you start drawing sometimes that you can see exactly what you're looking for. So I'll take that there. So starting with the semicircle. Now, if you've not done these before, you'll know you'll what you what I'm going to do a demonstration of the first step, and then you can pause it and you can put these shapes in. So if you make a start like that, right? So going about halfway across on that circle, go a little bit further. And what I want you to do is just put two lines in there. I've got two lines coming down. And from there, actually that's not up enough. From there, we've got a line here and that's coming down, out and like that. Okay, now here, I want you to just coming down to there, not even a centimetre, and we're gonna curve that around there. Now his tail comes all the way out to here. It's really distinctive shape that. So think about the shape within the shape here and curve that round. I'm going to curve it down to there very lightly. So that's a start there. I think that possibly should have come slightly lower. Right, let's get the head shapes in now. Coming up the circle to about there, about quarter of the way up, we're going to do two small lines there and then a line at an angle then if we take this line all the way out here like that i'm going to go there and then up and then a real angle there and then i'll join that up a triangle here and a shape now if you're struggling at all with any of these shapes Stop, take a breath, think about the shape. Think about the shape within the shape. That can really help by thinking about, like for me, when I was drawing that line, I was thinking about that triangle. Okay, so pause, get those shapes in. And oh, we've just got one more bit. I see Elizabeth always sees what I've missed. One more bit here, and I just want to curve that round to there. And then we'll move on to the next bit. So we've got our basic shapes here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in and I'm going to adapt these shapes. So if I put that there, can you still see both those Elizabeth? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to just take these. We're going to pretty much miss out the head for now. I'm going to really focus on the sack and his body here. So starting with the back of the sack there, I've got a line I'm going to take 
So this curving line here, that is the bottom of the sack. I'm going to take it up there to about there. We're going to join that up. And then just add a few little lines in within your semicircle for the sack here, just to make it look there. And then this bit, really, from about there, that forms the top of the sack there. Right, I'll come in and do the chickens in a minute. What I'm going to do here is pop in the shapes, which will make his scarf. That, if this looks really odd, just think shapes. This is actually what it's going to form here, there. But just think shapes. Small triangle, little another shape down, another shape coming up like that. And if you're thinking to yourself, I wonder why she doesn't just say, draw in the scarf. For me, this has been all about how I've learned how to draw so that I can really paint things like when I'm painting a complex portrait, I'm not thinking this is an eye. I'm thinking this is a circle next to a, 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 a small triangle. That's what I, I, I think like, and it really has helped me with my drawing. So I'm taking that shape up there and then I'm gonna put another triangle in there and that will form his little scarf. Now, just under there, we've got this little, cir not circular, but sort of, semi um oval. oval thank you elizabeth oval shape in there that will become his hand and there we're going to take another sort of oval shape which will form that arm hold as if it's holding the sack come down here and we'll just put in a curve so we started with all these straight lines and we're putting all these curves in there now i want to take the sack in so it goes to there and a triangle there Coming underneath here, we've got another couple of triangles. This is actually, um, I think it's like his little smart waistcoat that will become. So we'll put those lines in there. And if we come up to the top now, let's get these chicken shapes in. I don't want you to overthink this. We've got a couple of things there. And then some lines there like that. So if you pause now and pop in those shapes and you can rub out any bits from the sack. And we're going to just finish it off with his face and his legs. Now let's start with his nose. Now his face actually is pretty much doesn't is unaltered here. At the bottom, once you've put the nose in, you just want to give a little wiggly line to loosen off that straight line we've got. And here, we're just going to take it up slightly in a curve, but not much, and then go round and take it so that we've got that ear coming up. Now this back ear isn't pointed, it just goes like that and down. This ear is pointed, but we don't really need to do anything to it, just odd, add a little bit there at the top. Let's give him his smile. I always think he looks so cunning. Got a little smile there. And then his eye, it's a kind of cross between a circle and a triangle. It's a curved triangle really, rather than a big circle. And there we go. And he's got these, I think they're whiskers coming out here, but they're very broken lines there. So we've got that, we've got his sack in, we've got all there. Just take it out a little bit like that at the back. This will all make sense when we start putting the color in it. The tail, you don't need to really do much to because we're gonna do that with the pen at the end. Uh, but here on the legs, what I want you to do is just curve it down there and curve it a little bit. Think about the shape within the shape when you're looking at it. I'll just show you what I mean here. So when you're looking at this on the pause bit, think about that shape there. Can you see? And think about that shape there. That will really help you as you draw this in. So I'm going to think about that shape, draw the leg going down, and it just sort of ends really. And then coming around, putting in that shape there. So I want it to come down at really an angle. That's going to come in there. And I'm just going to leave it so it sort of ends there like that. And that is my fox. So I'm going to get drawing, colouring now. So stick with me. And oh, there's a couple of bits I've forgotten. Thank you again, Elizabeth. Here, don't forget the chicken's legs. Now, these are really easy. One, two, three, four. And on each of them, you want to put four little stripes, with four little marks for feet. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we've got a little feather here as well, which I, I thought looked like a, a Japanese character or a Chinese character. You just want to do a small line with some little lines. 
coming off it like that. And that's the feather. Okay, so pause, get those in, and then we'll get some colours. little watercolour washes in here using my watercolour pencils but you can use watercolour paints as well if you want we've got few only a very few colours here I'm going to start on the sack and I'm going to go like this with my yellow but I want the yellow going into green so I'm going to go here with some green as well and I want those two colours to mix in so as I make sure I've got a nice clean brush start with my yellow because it's the lightest colour I usually start with that and then we're just turning that to paint with the water. And as I turn the green as well, can you see, I will bring that in so that the two mix with each other. So we've got that kind of greeny yellow on the sack there. And I'm gonna use a bit of green here for that. Thank you, Nigel. <laughs> My husband's just brought a lovely cup of coffee for me and Elizabeth, which was just what we need when we're painting foxes. I'm going to take a bit of that green into there as well. And I've got a tiny bit of green here on that and a bit of pink as well. I'll just put that in there like that at the end. Right, so Coming in now to the blue, and the blue is the colour of his spotty neckerchief here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in the spots, like that. And then I'm going to turn it to blue to paint, but so that the spots still remain there. The coat, however, is not. It's a really strong blue, so I'm going to come around there like that. In there to put that shape in. I want it to really, his coat to really show up here. So I'm going to take it out there like that and then I'll just put a bit, I want to have that line there and coming up. I'm going to leave that because that's his hand. You see, so it's turned back really nice and quickly. Doing the blue. And actually take it right down so it comes to the top of the waistcoat there. Now, while I've got that bit of blue on my brush, I'm going to put a bit of blue in for the feather. That was probably slightly too much, actually. Just like that. And I'm also going to take a bit of the blue and put it on that chicken there. So that's us almost done now. I just need to use my final bit of paint. I've got a bit of water there on my sketchbook. My final bit of paint is going to be here on these legs. And rather than colouring it in, I'm just going to put the paint pigment from these amazing pencils. Put the paint pigment on there like that. And it'll be my brush that does the work. All the careful colouring of it, especially here on the tail. I'm taking my brush, making sure it's clean. I don't want any of that blue on. I can just go here. Now, I don't want it going, I really don't want it to mix in with the, um, I can hear the seagulls <laughs> outside. It's um, this time of year where we are, we're only just a few minutes from the sea. The seagulls are crazy loud. I'm going to try and get those pencil marks off. I just do that by just keep going in with my brush, really, and it'll lift the marks. I just want, it's my pen that will bring all this together. I need a bit more water there to take that down so that the tail comes like that. And then we've, I needed a bit on his hand. Just turn that there. And then his face, leaving the bit around his nose white leaving the bit around his eye white. Everything else is to turn to paint. And then what I'm going to do is leave this to dry for a minute or two, and then I can come back and finish it off with my pen. And while that leaves to dry, Elizabeth and I will be able to have our lovely cups of coffee. 
Right, let's finish this off with these lovely loose pen marks. So any kind of fine liner will do or a sharp black pencil. Don't use a big thick sharpie. You don't want a big thick outline here. What you want is fast moving lines. I'm going to start here and I'm not, if you've done the witches as well, I've talked about this a lot because we do it in the warm up. It's all about keeping your marks loose so you're not outlining. You're doing these lovely loose little sketchy marks. So I'm holding the pen very, very lightly here and I'm not outlining. I'm going up and down and I'm moving really quickly. That's, that's the effect you want to get this really illustrative loose style. Going over all the lines you've done before but keeping it really loose. So I'm putting lines like that for his hand. Coming round. The lines I've put in with the watercolour pencil here are so strong that I barely need anything really in his jacket. But I do want that effect as if he's going really fast. There we go. And the same in the tail. The tail's got a lot of pen marks in it. And it's all about being loose, loose, loose marks. Let's go with these legs. Same thing here. So you can see it's really not an outline. It's very much part of the style of the drawing to have this loose marks in the waistcoat there. Mine's actually still slightly wet, but it doesn't matter. Who's this laughing at me because I'm so impatient. I can't wait for things to dry. I just say, that'll do. Right, let's get the sack in. So keeping those marks nice and loose around there. Put in a few lines here. I love these chicken legs. There's something always so brilliantly um, observed in the illustrations. And I think if you've, if, you know, when you've got free time over the summer, look at some of your favorite book illustrators and copy their style. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's a great way to learn. It's like a musician playing other people's music. You don't have to compose your own to improve. Use other people's work. It's a brilliant way to just keep your skills building. Right, I'm going to go for the feather like that and I'm just going to put in these lines and that is my fox. Have a go at the witch. You really enjoyed that and don't forget if you go back on the YouTube channel you'll also find that we've got um, George's Marvelous Medicine and Matilda so we've got more Roald Dahl pictures there in the archive for you so have a go at those make sure you send us your pictures on our facebook or instagram or twitter we love seeing them we're going to be back tomorrow when we've got some lovely fruit for tuesday see you then mm -hmm.